Uh, I hope everyone is doing safe and sound and everything is going okay and well for you. Thank you for joining my session. Um, we will uh, quickly going through uh, Omnipresence uh, radar sensor on PX4 environment and uh, most probably you have seen the contents we're going to be talking about. Uh, I will just make them uh, a bit more uh, clear here. So let's start. Uh, hopefully you can see my slides clear and uh, yes um, so uh, I'm really thankful first of all uh, to the uh, to Eastern Mediterranean University that I'm research assistant in currently and uh, also Cyprus robotics uh, by the way hi from Cyprus and um, they, they were they were supporting uh, through the uh, whole implementation of this project and also providing the sensor um so uh, le let's go forward and see what we are going to talk about yes uh, my name is farhang uh, a little brief about me currently i'm research assistant in eastern mediterranean university i am uh, doing my masters in uh, electrical electronics engineering and my research interests are uh, ekf uh, automation and control in addition to deep learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, currently, I'm also co-founder of Karate Robotics Company, which is in charge of underwater uh, automated vehicles. And uh, also, I'm CTO at Cypress Robotics. Uh, we are we are making autonomous robots. Uh, so, uh, also uh, another contributor we had in this project was uh, Mr. Mustafa. He was uh, he is also our software developer. And he, he also helped this project to happen. Uh, first of all, let me share a disclaimer uh, through before before we start the uh, the rest of the, the details. Uh, the sensor I have here, um, let me let me check if I can show it. Yeah, the sensor I have here, which is Omnipresence two hundred forty three, I have it as uh, a uh, two hundred forty three a. Uh, contradictory to what had been shared on uh, on details uh, on the uh, on the schedule. Um, this is only for research and development purposes because the device is really sensitive and uh, based on what company has mentioned, you are not authorized to use this for uh, enterprise applications. So, um, so. Uh, if you want to use it for enterprise applications, you have to be authorized. They they will they will give you another kind of sensor with uh, chips attached on it, and uh, you need to have uh, its own verification from the location you want to implement. Uh, what we will be proposing here will be only for research and development purposes. So let me go through the next slide. Yes, what is OPS two four three a sensor? is a Doppler effect, uh, Doppler velocity sensor uh, that uh, can measure speed and direction at the same time. And uh, th th this model is only able to measure speed and direction, but there is another model which we had mentioned there wrong, uh, 243C, uh, which you can measure also the range in addition to a speed. But here we have 243A, which is the simple one and can only measure the speed. So uh, all, all the uh, radar signals are processed on the board itself. You don't need to process anything. You just connect your radar and you can just interface through serial and that's it. You have the output and uh, even, even, the, uh, even the outputs are signed that you can even uh, guess the direction of the vehicle coming to you. So uh, the idea here is uh, we have brought this sensor, uh, which is really precise a speed measurement sensor, on a drone. And I think it will be really interesting uh, implementation. So uh, for uh, reporting format for a frequency that you want it to report to you, there is a huge setting behind it. So you can like customize it as much as you want. It's really industrial level sensor. And for sure, it's not cheap, actually. Uh, here we have a, uh, a small detail about the sensor. It can measure up to a range of 75 to 100 meters, uh, considering the fact that how you have put 
uh, your uh, sensor like with what angle and uh, what is your way of implementation but this is this is an estimate so let's say if we have a drone flying on top of the street like 20 meters 30 meters we can easily measure a two-way road uh, with the sensor so it's uh, it's completely uh, it's completely feasible and I told you it's like industrial level uh, you can see the uh, you can see the uh, field of view uh, here, and uh, I have taken this from the uh, from the company's user manual as well. Uh, based on request, they will also give you. What we have done in mechanical side, we have taken a uh, an X five hundred uh, Holy Bro frame kit, which is behind me. I have it. So yeah, this black guy here. Uh, we have designed a mount, a specific mount, which can be screwed to uh, to the uh, payload holder. And uh, the, the design also is uh, open source and it's available for any one of you who, who are interested. You can just download it and print it for yourself. Uh, so, um, yeah, that, that is the mechanical side of it. I really recommend to use screws for this because as you are flying, uh, I have used double double sided tapes here, but you don't do that. Uh, how we have connected? It's actually really easy. You just have three wires coming from your teleport. We have implemented this with UART here, but if you are really interested, you can also use I two C. It depends on you. Serial was easier for us, so we did it like that. Uh, you need only three wires going to your uh, radar because your radar just wants to just wants to give output. You better disconnect and have no communication writing to the radar. So you just want to read from it. So this is the way you're gonna be connecting. It's really simple. Uh, what we have done. This is this is really important. Uh, on PX4 side, we have written an app. So we are reading serial values and then we are forwarding this as URB messages uh, onto PX4 environment and uh, we can we can have them like uh, we can work with them any way we need uh, logging handle has also been added within this application that you just run this app on your Mavlink console let's say or you put it on on the boot and uh, there you go it's really easy uh, also we had to uh, the another challenge we had was that we had to define a custom Mavlink message for it um, because uh, it has to be it has to be uh, it has to be transferred on a separate channel so yeah uh, so on ground station we can receive and we can show uh, what we need on what we needed on ground station was that uh, we first of all we needed a fact group for those of you who are advanced level in developing QGC that you know what fact group is so and for those of you who have no idea you can go and check the uh, documentations we added a fact group so we can have the data on the hood uh, on the main screen and uh, we also added new message compatibility on back end so we can also see the message uh, on Mavlink inspector uh, so that we can show it uh, as uh, like as as the as the speed values are being uh, received from the sensor so uh, the most interesting part is the output. So let me see how clear you can see it. Yeah, it is clear, I think. On right side, let me see if I can. No, I cannot. Um, on on left side, sorry. On left side, you have the QGC view. As you can see, our drone is flying on top of a street here. This is our university campus. And uh, we, have, we have captured the speed, as you can see, on the uh, bottom side. Uh, even the unit measurements have been implemented in the code, in the application. And uh, you don't need to do anything. You just choose your QGC settings. If you want them to be meters per second or kilometer per hour, depends on the user. But the rest have been taken care of. So you don't need any. Uh, let's say any calculations, any additional calculations. The speed is what it is and what you see. Uh, so on the right side, as I told you, we have logging example. Uh, so the, the application here, we have called it Omni because of this Omni presence. And uh, that's it. That is the output. You can simply log the values and you can exactly 
uh, have those attached to your GPS location and also the timing uh, for uh, for for the for the monitored uh, speed. So if anyone is going above a speed limit or if there are any restrictions anywhere, you can simply monitor it. How this could be useful? Uh, how uh, like uh, what the applications are going to be? I think they're clear. I will not jump into that. But I told you from the beginning, this is the uh, this was a research and development uh, project. So uh, what happens? What happened to the pull requests, and if we are going to share them or right or not? Uh, we are waiting for the company to give confirmation for this. Uh, if we got confirmation for uh, for this from Omnipresence, then uh, the PR is ready, and then we will publish it after. And hopefully, PX4 developers can help us merge it. Okay, uh, references you're gonna go for. Technically, it will be Mavlink, PX4 documentation, and QGround control documentations. I'm not saying everything is there. You need to go and do some trials and errors, but uh, you'll find what you are uh, looking for. And also Omnipresence website that you can see from materials available. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, I have, my session is finished. So uh, if you have any questions, you may ask. Um, one, one of the questions I've been asked uh, is that, like, um, how, how do you, uh, if we can even measure humans, like, movement? Uh, to some extent, yes. Uh, this, this sensor is really precise. Um, uh, even within a specific uh, session, uh, within a specific, let's say, length or speed that human is walking, you can even also monitor humans. Uh, another interesting idea uh, came to our mind that I'm really looking for it, is that if you could have the other sensor, which is 243C, uh, you can have range information there, and you could use it for many different uh, applications like range measurements, and at the same time, the speed, and at the same time, you can also guess uh, like uh, how how far the object you have measured this bit for uh, was from you. No, multipath. Uh, yes, Jeff, I have a question here. Uh, multipath. What do you mean by multipath? You mean like a two-way street or more? Uh, <clears throat> let me let me tell you like this uh, metallic interference mm, have you tried it yes we did so if you mean like electromagnetic area no we didn't find any effect about it uh, but um, but uh, metallic interference it wasn't really the case for us so we didn't try that but regarding precision, as you're asking for, even for electromagnetic like area, we had no issue. And since you're flying technically away, so it makes sense, it's feasible, uh, since you're flying like 20, 30 meters. But on the other hand, they are using this sensor like on the streets sometimes. So it is really touched, like it is really attached to, uh, to metallic uh, materials. No, 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 no. Card rates for cards, no. Yes, the no, no, no. The sensor has a range. Uh, I think it was up to four hundred kilometers per hour, something like that, and it's really precise. Like each, uh, each one kilometer per hour, it's really precise, and you can have them. You can have the data as the stream. So you can just pick the maximum if you want to. Yes, you can. You can. You can de define your sampling rates. So uh, for that sampling rate, 
within a frequency, you can continuously monitor uh, your speed. If you can, if you take a look here, you can get an idea. You see how many readings I have only in 41, the second 41, see how many readings I have and how precise they are and how different they are. So uh, this is the precision for the sensor. It's really, it's really recommended to be used. All right, thank you everyone. I think the session is finished. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can reach me out uh, through the uh, through the uh, this uh, the hub here, and with networking sessions, I would be really happy to help you. Thank you very much. I hope you liked it. Have a nice day. Bye bye.